She obviously wasn't in the house, she wasn't outside, they drove around a bit, couldn't see her. Um, so it wasn't until later on in the day we understood fully what had happened, um, but by med you know, this is 10 o'clock in the morning, so by early afternoon, you know, quite a number of hours have passed. We haven't seen her, there's been no sign of her, and um, so we got the police involved because we were obviously a bit concerned, we just didn't know where, where she was. Getting lost and potentially wandering, um, that's quite a big concern for people and for family members obviously. Um, but what we do is just give the reassurance that we can put preventative measures in um, to help support people through these situations. There are currently around 8,000 of our fellow Glaswegians living with dementia, the vast majority at home. At the HSCP, our whole strategy is geared towards supporting people to remain living at home as independently as possible for as long as possible. The Herbert Protocol is a kind of classic example of how we can work together in advance to really help so that, for example, when someone goes missing who's living with dementia, we already have a lot of information uh, which can save a lot of time uh, and therefore uh, kind of really maximises our chances of finding someone safe and well. The protocol allows individuals and their families to proactively plan ahead for any such episode, safe in the knowledge that it will trigger a coherent multi-agency response involving the HSCP, police and other key partners. In the city it's so easy to be lost and I do think that it's going to be incredibly hard to get every agency to look at it together, but it probably needs to come together very quickly. So I think it's a speed thing. And I think that's what's happened in the past when people have gone lost and not been found. It's not been quick enough approach. It means that the, the time we can save, but we've got accurate information in, in advance, uh, really then we can start uh, getting officers uh, to, to look in particular areas. So if we know where the local haunt is or a particular area of the city, then we can send officers there. We can be checking CCTV. If it's a huge area or perhaps it's at night, for example, then using some of the, the specialist uh, kind of services we have, such as the, the police helicopter, which has got the kind of infrared and the night vision. <laughs> On average, from call to get an organised life vest on, helmet on, out to the aircraft, started up no more than five minutes. Day to day, um, I would say probably the vast majority of our work is made up of vulnerable missing people. Um, probably that makes up about 80 to 90 percent of our work. When you look for a missing person, I think initially what you think about is what their physical appearance might be. So, you know, they're tall, they've got blue eyes, they were out wearing, you know, a red jacket. Actually, that isn't that helpful when you're looking for someone with a dementing condition. What you need to know are some really personal things. Did they work shifts? Did they work in the shipyard? Did they have um, their children go to a local school? The things that were really important to them in their past, which might be really pertinent now, could be put down on a piece of paper and then shared with everyone very quickly. It's really a full background, you know, her working history, her social um, activities, um, you know, whether where she worked, um, where she, um, you know, the church, the people that she knew, people that she was friendly with, where they all lived. Um, where she liked to, you know, places that she liked um, when she was younger um, to spend time, such as, you know, places that she goes shopping, places that she's worked in, and um, places that she has, um, you know, done for leisure as well. And the sort of things that she, you know, routes that she likes to go walking and things like that. So, for example, she, you know, she enjoyed walking along the canal. So they were up sort of searching that and made a note of that so that they would look at that, look at that again. Knowing that, having that on a piece of paper, be able to share that with everyone involved very quickly, could allow that golden window of a couple of hours to find them. In Alzheimer's Scotland, we have a thing called the Purple Alert, um, and it's actually in connection with the Herbert Protocol. One of the questions it asks you is, do have you filled in the Herbert Protocol? And that's an app that you can download onto your phone, and if somebody in your family or somebody that you know has gone missing, it just puts this alert out to everybody in the, within the area um, to say that this person's gone missing, can you look out for them? Now, not everyone has a family. 
not everyone has got a special person. So anyone who's working with that individual can fill that out for them with them and um, have that kept safe for if the eventuality happens that they leave without anyone knowing where they are. We feel there's almost like a security blanket um, that if this was to happen, they know then what to do. What had happened was that she'd, she was obviously oblivious to everything that had happened, um, but she'd walked all the way down to, um, to one of the main shopping areas in Glasgow, um, which is probably three, or three, three, miles from the, three miles from her home. She'd had a sort of stumble, um, fell and hurt her leg, and a passerby had sort of helped her up and got a taxi organised and she'd obviously managed to get the taxi to, to her house. Um, um, ultimately, you know, she just appeared herself but um, you know, they gathered a lot of the information that was required. Um, you know, the, I suppose at that point in time we didn't have the Herbert Protocol in place um, but all the information they were gathering really meant that in the future um, all the information that was required by that was in place so that um, you know, we didn't have to go through it again at, at a future event. And with her condition, there's every possibility because she lives alone um, that it could happen again since she's physically active. It's something that goes to the right of the heart of I suppose, why you joined the police and why uh, you know colleagues in, in the social work and health, why, why they do what they do, uh, it really strikes a chord so it's taken really seriously. Uh, so the officers attending are taking it really seriously, there's a, a kind of degree of professional worry, right, we want to, to find out where this person might be and we want to find them as quickly as possible. For me, that's my aim. Every interaction I have with a patient with dementia, I want them to be safe and I want them to live their lives with the illness. And at the end of every consultation I have, I say to patients, don't let this define you. I want you to live your life and I don't want this to be everything. And if we let that happen, we need to support it too. And that's why I think it's really vital. Even small changes can make a big impact on someone's life.